Hello everybody, hola, namaste and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at how to launch a devastating attack using the Scorch game. So if you guys love Scorch, this one's for you. Let's jump right into it. It starts with e4, we have e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4 striking the center, pawn takes, knight takes back, and knight g2 e7, which is kind of the first mistake. The knight is actually better placed on f6 instead of e7, and you guys will see why in some time. Uh, white moves with knight to c3 and g6 with the idea of fianketoing this bishop on the g7 square. And this is, uh, again, in this position, you play bishop g5, uh, taking uh, advantage of black's inaccuracy. And as you can see, this f6 square is kind of weak. So after this, black plays bishop g7. And this is where you start the fun. You play knight to d5, now putting more pressure on this uh, e7 knight. At the same time, it seems that you're offering the knight on d4, but can be captured. Let's see. If knight takes, then the game is lost on the spot because bishop takes and your queen is lost on the next move. So that's not possible. But however, the bishop can take on d4. But now can you check the move or see the move which wins for white in this position? This queen takes on d4. Because if knight takes, the knight f6 check, king moves, and what a beautiful checkmate that is. Wow, look at this. I mean, dude, this is just so nice to see. That's not possible. So, uh, maybe in this position, a black might try to castle, but that doesn't work either because again, knight f6 check, and it doesn't matter if the king goes to g7 or h8, it's the same. His fate is sealed, he moves. Now, knight g4 check. If knight takes, then well, bishop f6 check king moves and again whoa, what a checkmate i just love to see you know checkmates like these it's amazing all right so that doesn't work so what can uh, black do in this position well the only move actually is f6 but after f6 nothing you just capture on f6 now the rook is under attack and black has two moves in this position he can either move the rook to uh, g8 or f8 let's see what happens if he comes to g8 if he comes to g8 well uh, nothing you just move the queen back to f3 and you tempt this black knight to jump to d4 which usually he will now the idea is he's uh, attacking your queen as well as the c2 pawn and after if he captures the c2 pawn he'll fork the king and the rook and probably win the rook but it's okay you let him do that you let him have his fun you move the queen to g3 now if he captures you move the king to d1 if he gets greedy he takes now uh, it's completely lost because you're, you're going to play knight c7 with check. The king can come to uh, f8 or f7. Either way, his fate is sealed. Let's see if he goes to uh, f8. Then you have two options here. You can either come to f4 with the queen or e5. Both are completely winning. But f4 is actually faster. Let's just show that. So queen f4 check. And now, as you can see, uh, he can go to g7. But if he goes to g7, then this is going to be checkmate. So he can't do that. So he'll have to play the only move in this position, which is knight to f5, giving up his queen because, well, the knight moved, the bishop captures the queen. Next move, uh, I, I mean, I don't know, there's no move for black here because the, this, this rook is hanging, this knight is hanging, this knight is trapped, he can't move. So this is going to be completely winning. The second variation is if he moves to uh, f8 and you move the queen to e5 instead of f4, well, now you're threatening to come to f6 and deliver checkmate. So... Uh, black has to defend by playing uh, rook g7, but then you trap or you uh, sorry you pin the rook on uh, g7 to the king. Now again, the only move is knight to f5. As you can see in these variations, this poor knight is getting uh, getting killed on f5. And after this, you just capture. Now the queen will come to e7 to protect uh, the rook. But can you see the now again? Can you see the move which uh, wins completely for uh, white in this position? It's bishop captures. And now black can make a mistake here. If he captures with the queen, which he thinks he can, well, he can't because this is going to be checkmate. So uh, you might actually win a lot of games if this kind of stuff happens because it's quite easy to miss this checkmate, honestly. I didn't see it the first time I saw it, honestly. So that's not possible. So if he goes to uh, f7, which is the only move here, well, bishop c4. And after this, as you can see, the king cannot go here, here 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 you don't want to immediately block with the queen so he'll have to push d5 but then nothing bishop takes on d5 now he's going to have to give up the bishop 
captures on e6 and now the poor king has no place to go he's going to have to give up his queen so queen takes you take back with the pawn and after the king moves you can gobble up the rook you can take this knight later and this is going to be a completely completely one game for white so the moral of the story is that the rook cannot go to g8 after the queen comes to f6 so let's see what happens if it comes to f8 which seems like a logical move but honestly it just prolongs the game because now you're just going to move the queen to g7 and okay fine now what can uh, black do in this position the idea is the knight is going to jump to f6 and deliver checkmate the rook will have to um, uh, sacrifice itself so uh, probably he can push say d6 but after d6 you play bishop b5 now pinning this knight to the king and now what does black play <clears throat> now as you can see uh, because of this pin the knight no longer defends the knight on e7 and white is attacking this knight on e7 with three pieces the knight the bishop and the queen so black is going to be forced to move his rook up the board but then you give a check now king moves check again now in this position it is not sensible to move your uh, king to e6 because he's going to be completely naked out there and you don't want your king so further up the board especially when there are queens on the board so that doesn't make sense so the logical move is to capture with the rook queen captures and now as you can see this king is completely exposed the queen is not even in the game the bishop and the rook are just sleeping out there i mean completely lost position uh in this position now as you can see uh the best move is going to be pawn to b6 trying to actually not develop the bishop but just trying to make an escape square for the king uh, but here uh, you can just play bishop c4 now the idea is pretty simple if the knight does not move say for example if uh, black plays a lazy move like bishop b7 ignoring the threats then you play bishop e6 check the only square for the king and this is going to be checkmate so black has to be very careful here and the idea here is that he has to move this knight so this is basically a zuxuang position where no matter what black plays his position is just going to be worse so if he moves to say b4 again trying to threaten this nothing white just simply castles and now all threats <clears throat> all of black's threats what happened to my voice there man all of black's threats <laughs> get taken off uh, taken care of out here uh, so after this uh, okay fine now he can the only good move for him is to actually move the king and give up this knight but say for example he plays uh, bishop uh, b7 then again check king moves and you gobble this up and this is game over as you can see uh, black has got six pawns white has got seven pawns but white is up an entire piece he's got an extra rook so this is going to be a completely lost position for black so yeah this is how you can actually launch a devastating attack using uh, the scotch game and it is pretty insane and I'm going to be covering a lot more uh, such opening traps and uh, chess openings and aggressive chess openings and I'll be also covering a lot of other games from the past and from the modern era as well so if you guys uh, do like my content please like and subscribe it really motivates me to keep on doing more and I'll see you next time cheers